So this is our next location. This place is related to the investigation. Figure it out for yourself. It's no fun if you don't, right? Man, this dude's an asshole. <laughs> okay, so let's check this. If I remember right, this card reader is meant to work with our handbooks, right? What? Do you have an issue with it? If so, you should take it up with Monokuma. He said that, then quickly and sharply clapped his hands together. Did you call for me? You called for me? Has he been domesticated? That's right. That's, oh, it seems that Makoto has a question for you. You need something? Sure, what's up? Uh, well, it's just about this card reader. Yep. Yes, the card reader has all have all been designed to interface with each other of your handbooks. You can only enter the locker room corresponding to the gender listed in your individual handbook. And it's impossible for two people in a row to go through while the door is unlocked, correct? And if there were some about. sort of erotic terrorist on the prowl. A ceiling mounted gallon gun would initiate a Swiss cheese slaughter! Jesus. Hm. The school regulations prohibit anyone from lending someone else their handbook, correct? Of course! Correctly, cor correctly correct! So then, that means only girls can go in the girls' locker room and only boys can go in the boys' locker room. In other words, Chihiro's body being found in the girls' locker room means. <laughs> Hey, Makoto, I can see right through you. See right through me? <laughs> Allow me to tell you what you're thinking. Since Chihiro was found in the girl's locker room, the killer must have been able to get in there. So in other As words... As such, the killer must be one of the girls. Did I get it right? Such Good ignorance. lord, you're simple. But am I wrong? You should pay closer attention to the regulations. The answer has been in front of you the entire time. Interesting. I said that earlier that this upcoming trial is my favorite. Oh, okay, good to know. Good to know. So I'm thinking... Because, was it, okay, the last, the last trial, we've had two girls and one dude die, right? What happens to their handbooks, right? Hear me out here. I don't know if this has been thought of, but what if somebody pocketed one of the girls' handbooks? It wouldn't surprise me. Everybody dying in this school. What if somebody pocketed the handbook and just kept it secret that they had it? That it's just in their room or something. And they just used it when it would be most convenient. Hmm? Hmm? Okay. You know what? I'm going to assume that that's what happened. I'm, just, I'm playing this out as... My guess is Chihiro's a dude. Somebody took the handbook and hid it in their room. And... It's actually two guys that are part of this, and they're framing some sort of girl. That's my that's my guesses. That's my guesses on this one. You should pay closer attention to the regulations. The answer has been in front of you the entire time. Loaning your e-handbook to another student is strictly prohibited. Exactly what I thought he was going to say. Only the act of loaning a handbook is prohibited. Borrowing someone else's is perfectly fine. That's what I thought. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I would expect nothing less from the prodigal son of the noble Takami family. So you managed to step out the loophole in the regulations. Hm. Knowing you, I would bet you created it on purpose, didn't you? To add a little more excitement to things. Yeah. <laughs> you treated me like a pure little appetizer instead of the main course that I am. He went from snack to meal this entire time, Are you kidding me? Now that uh, since the dead can't actually talk, they're not people anymore, they're things. Yep. Get it? Get it? Good. Wait, hold on. You're saying that's a loophole? But in order to borrow something for someone, then that means someone would have to loan it. So, um... Why are you? So, Slipper! Just listening to you makes me want to pass out. Be more like Miyakiya and get your poop together. Unbelievable. Or else I'll charge you with criminal negligence. No more questions. Figure out the rest for you. Figure out the rest of your own damn self. Goodbye, blushing bear. Well, I know you are unfortunately lacking in mental faculties, so I'll fill you in myself. Let's head to the main hall. The main hall? <laughs> That'll help you understand what's going on. Card reader has been added to the truth bullet section of your handbook. We came to the main hall. So, what are we looking for here? Does that mean I have to figure it out myself? 
Okay, nope. The mailbox? There's a mailbox here. Could there be something inside? It's an e-handbook. Hmm. No, wait, there's three of them. But what are they doing here? Hmm. So you finally found them. Huh? Did you know these were here, Yakia? <laughs> I happened to find them by chance myself the other day. Are you the murderer? Okay. It seems there's a symptom. Uh, symptom? There's a system in place where the handbooks of dead students get delivered to this mailbox. So then these three handbooks belong to Junko, Leon, and Sayaka. Hmm. You can go ahead and confirm it for yourself. I immediately turned to, on one of the handbooks, and when I did... Doesn't Matakuma always make the people at Hope's Peak suffer if they work together? Um, in this one, he seems to not give a shit. I don't know if that's the case for the other ones, but in this one, for sure, he's just less, he's just kind of there. He's like, hey, Monokuma, I'll give you a hint, and if you don't like my hint, I'll tell you to go fuck yourself. That's basically Monokuma in this. You're right, this is Sayaka's handbook. <laughs> now, do you understand? This is the key to the loophole that I revealed earlier. Yeah, I feel like I'm starting to get it. I think I'm right. I think a dude killed a dude inside the girl's bath. Hmm... Yeah, I think a dude killed... Well, I'm, I'm iffy on the girls' bathroom thing. I think it's all been staged. I think everything about this is fucking weird and goofy. Only the act of loaning a handbook is prohibited. Blah, 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 blah. I see. Yeah, now I understand. Main Hall E Handbooks has been added to the Truth Bullet section of your handbook. What? Hmm, hold on a sec. What's wrong? Very strange. That's strange. One of the handbooks won't turn on. Is it broken? Whose is it? The other handbook showed Junko's name when I started it up. The other, then that, the one that won't turn on must be Leon's, right? I see. It would make sense, yes. After all, he did get pummeled with dozens and dozens of baseballs. Pummeled with baseballs. The memory of it came flooding back, but that wouldn't destroy the handbooks because they said that the handbooks were super, super strong, didn't they? That cruel punishment which led to Leon's death, the execution that the mastermind concocted, a cruel, heartless death. You're right, it wouldn't be surprising for the handbook to break during that kind of assault. Actually, it wouldn't. Damn it! Hi, hi! Hi, 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 hi! hi. What? Body handbook is a central disturbed life here, crucial, integral, instrumental, a super big deal! There's no way it would make that easily! But it did. That's impossible! Honestly, it wouldn't break, it wouldn't freaking break! If we can, if it can withstand up to 10 tons of pressure and it waterproof up to 100 meters, okay? Okay, I remember him saying that before. I don't, I don't care how many baseballs you hit it with, it wouldn't do crap. Oh, but uh, even my amazing handbook does have one single weak point. It does? I can't hear you! But a secret, I wouldn't want you to go breaking any more handbooks. Let me what? guess, water damage. Then Leon must have broken it somehow without realizing what its weakness was, right? Hmm, hmm hard to say. You know what I think? I think his handbook isn't actually broken. Wah wah? But, but you might ask, how could that be? Big brain moment here. It's not Leon's handbook, it's the killer's handbook, and whoever the killer is has Leon's. What just happened? Monokuma said it's not broken, but it's an undeniable fact that it's not turning That's on. That's fine. But I don't see any connection to the case, so it doesn't matter for now. So whoever killed Chihiro has Leon's handbook, but why would they have Leon's handbook? That would be because they thought Chihiro was a dude, and Chihiro was in the guy's locker room, and they didn't want to leave a tree. I don't know. Man, I'm trying to figure out how I'm going to connect us all together. You think so? Either way, something about it still bothers me. It's been added to the truth bullet section of your handbook. <laughs> okay then, this should be enough to get things rolling. Let's begin our investigation in earnest and track down the true culprit. Well, yeah, we need to find out who killed Chihiro. Hmm. To be exact, not quite. Huh, not quite? Is that everything that was in here? Do I have to talk to you? What do you mean by that, Bayakia? To be exact, not quite. Hmm. Certainly I want to reveal Chihiro's killer, but more precisely, <laughs> 
I want to discover the true identity of Genocide Jack. Oh, okay. Then you really think, you truly believe Genocide Jack is the one that killed Shakira. Don't make me repeat myself. Absolutely. I have no doubt that Genocide Jack is the culprit in this case. But why? That murderous fiend is Genocide Jack, right? What? There's nobody else it could be. A murderous fiend who kills again and again using a bizarre and brutal method. They're like a ghost, attacking suddenly, then slipping away before the police can catch up to them. And what nickname did the internet give to this mysterious serial killer? Genocide Jack. They say he's killed thousands of people, but that's gotta be an urban legend. Still, could one of us really be a demented, psychotic killer like that? <laughs> You're not wrong to wonder, but words mean little right now. <laughs> I have something that will prove it, and I can show you. What? <laughs> Hold on, there's still more here waiting to be checked. Oh, is it you? Should I check more of you? What do you mean by that, Yaki? Yeah, be... <laughs> Don't so make me repeat you. myself. Oh, and I have a basis to believe that, I assure you, Genocide Jack is more of us. Is it really proof? <laughs> There's somewhere I'd like to take you. This will provide all the evidence you need. It's all clear. Evidence now. that Genocide Jack is the one that killed Shihiro. Evidence? Does something like that really... Ah, uh, hey, you two. Big trouble. Need your help. I don't have time We're to busy. Leave you. us alone. But it's an emergency. Emergency. Come on, please. You gotta help me. Please. This is a serious emergency. Please, please, you gotta help me. Just calm down, okay, Hina? But, but it's an emergency. An emergency? What happened? Well... Something's wrong with Toko. She's acting super strange. Well, I mean, she was acting pretty strange earlier, right? What should we do, Biaki? Very strange. Since it's Toko, I must admit, I'm intrigued. I suppose we could take a second to see what's going on with her. Are you sure? Don't make me repeat myself. Don't make myself. me repeat myself. I didn't expect that. I thought for sure he'd just say no and that'd be the end of it. Yeah! Okay, okay, come on, hurry, hurry. Wait for us, Hina. Let's go. It looks like he, she's headed to the dorms. To Toko's room, most likely. You're right. Oh, God. She's fucking Genocide Jack, isn't she? Such You're talking ways. to the wrong person, you waste of space. Oh, you know what? How about I grow one foot and I punch you in your fucking throat, you stupid son of a bitch? Okay. Hello. You guys are too slow. I think you're just too fast. Hm. So, what's this emergency? So, well, after um... what happened to the girls' locker room, we left Toko in her room so she could lay down. After a while, we came back to check on her, you know, see how she was doing, but when we did, mm. it was weird. She refused to come out, and she kept saying all this weird stuff. We weird stuff. That's fine. We should try talking her our, to our. We should try talking to her ourselves. Yeah, good idea. Uh oh, Toko. May as well give it a shot. The door swung open slowly and silently. Holy crap. An aura of negativity th flowed out from behind the door, focusing a gra a gas or forcing a gasp out of me. I think they gave her weed and she got crazy. I mean, I smoke weed every day and I've never got that kind of shakes. What? What? Oh, uh, nothing. Oh, you're gonna voice act it for me? Just okay. That, uh, Hina was really worried about you, holding yourself up in your room. Leave me alone. Um, yeah, sure thing. But... Could you open up, just for a second? You won't allow it. Huh? You won't let Genocide Jack have control! Really? Okay, so it's not her. It's too obvious. What was that? Mm. She's been acting like that the whole time, when I rang a little while ago. I'll dry, drive out the killer, d drive out the murderous fiend. Um. It doesn't make any sense, right? I was afraid to leave her in there alone, so I tried to bust down the, her door. Really? Owie? Really? <clears throat> Excuse me. But I felt like something was holding it shut on the other side. I couldn't even budge it. Probably a chair. Toko was scared enough to even bar her door? Does she think the same thing as Byakuya? 
Does she think the serial killer Genocide Jack really murdered Jihiro? No, she is Genocide Jack. She literally just said, I won't let Genocide Jack have control. <laughs> is that why Toko's so scared? What? Whatever it is, I'm really worried about her. Isn't there anyone who might be able to persuade her? You. Mr. Tall Dick. Hey, Byakia, you think you could ask her? To come out of her room, I mean? That's fine. Sure, whatever. Huh? huh you're gonna talk to her, Byakia? Well, I guess you can be nice when you want to. Byakia just stood in front of her door, not making a sound, and pressed the doorbell. Ding dong, after a few moments. What do you want? Leave me alone, you're all so annoying. Uh, uh Bla Bacula. It's Byakuya. <laughs> She's in love with a man she doesn't know the name of. I I'm sorry, I c couldn't keep our promise. But don't worry, never again. I, I, I won't let Genocide Jack have control ever again. And with that, the door slammed shut. Hmm. Even Byakia couldn't col pull it. Couldn't call it off. Couldn't pull it off. Hmm. There's nothing else we can do. Let's get back to the investigation. Hold on. Hey Byakia, what was Toko talking about just now? Something about a promise? What? Hmm. Oh, I have no idea. Another one of her delusions, I'm sure. But Stop talking. if I say I don't know, that means I don't know. Just let Hina take care of her. Hmm. Oh, oh, yeah, okay. I'll stay here and keep an eye on her. Let's go. Well then, let's go. Without a, waiting for a reply, Byakia sped away. Actually, it was just a normal pace, but because I'm a foot and a half shorter than him, it just felt like he was rushing away. Byakia! And I hurried to catch up. I tried to talk to him several times as we walked, but he didn't even look back, let alone say anything. He just kept on walking toward his destination. Finally, his feet brought him to a stop in front of a certain room. The library. <laughs> Come on, let's go in. Hmm. <laughs> there are no clues there we need to check elsewhere. Oh, alright. Is it with you? Um, is the evidence that proves it was Genocide Jack really in the Don't library? Make Don't make myself. me say it again. I don't know, books? <laughs> Are you kidding me? Oh, I got a nice coin, though. Hell yeah, more gifts for whoever wants them. <laughs> oh my god, fine. It's in here then, isn't it? No fucking shit. If I remember on the other side of this door, it's the archive, right? <laughs> Hurry up and go inside. Oh, here? Let's go. It all makes sense once you're inside. <clears throat> Whoa, there's so many books and files. And so much dust, so in too. Other I words... would say there's enough value in this place to endure the dust. Okay, couple places to look. Shelf stuff with files without really thinking about it. I picked one at random. <laughs> Ah, you have sharp eye indeed to select the file, huh? That's right. That's the report on a presidential assassination. The original is kept at the National Library. It won't be declassified for another 30 years. Are you sure you want to look at it now? <laughs> There's no telling whose crosshairs you might wind up in for peeking at it. Without making a sound, I returned the file to the shelf. What was he going to do, sell me out himself? What a cuck. There's a wooden box, it's empty. Although, judging by the smudges in the dust, it looks like there was something inside. I wonder what it was. Hmm. It was an extension cord plugged in there. I, it, it proved very useful while I was in the library. Oh, an extension cord, huh? So that's where the extension cord come from, came from. Another lamp that looks like it, huh? It's a dust lamp. Oh yeah, it's the same one I saw Byakia using in the library before. Yeah, that makes sense. What? Do you have a problem with that lamp? It was here before, then I moved it over there. It's too dark over there, so I thought I'd put it to good use. You know what, that makes sense. I got a nice for it. Okay, so there's something behind Byakia, so I'm not sure I'm supposed to trigger him without triggering That's the thing enough. behind him. Those documents are dangerous. Dangerous? 
They detail all the people who control the world from behind the scenes. Dangerous truth for a commoner. You mean like members of the Diet or something? <laughs> no, I mean the ones with real power. The secret council controlling everything from the shadows. If you're ready to be to be disappeared for it, take a look. There are some very interesting people in there. You're just kidding, right? <laughs> Am I? I feel like I'd still read it. I'll just let it go for now. I would still read that shit. Are you kidding me? I would instantaneously read it. There wouldn't be a stop for it. There's a ton of thick files stuffed onto the bookshelf. <laughs> if you're thinking of looking through any of them, I'll let me give you a little warning. Those, fi those things are filled with graphic, disturbing photos from all kinds of crime scenes. Man, I don't think this dude has even seen a murder happen in front of his face, and yet he's been part of Danganronpa for two chapters now. So, that's really saying something. It's the kind of thing any normal person wouldn't ever want to look at. Be careful. I mean, we just watched... We, it's been a week and I've seen two people die in front of me. You think photos are going to scare the shit out of me? What's wrong with you, small man? <laughs> I don't know where I was going with that. Huh, what do you mean? All those files there are investigation reports re related to different cold cases. Those are internal documents for police eyes only. They're not the kind of thing you'd expect to look at. Oh. Hm. So, are you finally beginning to understand the true splendor of this library? The entire reason that I was interested in the library is because of this room right here. Hm. Interesting. It's the home to classified government documents, police records, things no ordinary person would ever see. Isn't it magnificent? This can't be for real, right? Such ignorance. That's your guys' problem. Anything that doesn't fit into your preconceived reality, you label it a lie. Well, it's not bad, it's just, it's not like a total, totally refused, it's not like I totally refuse to believe it, but, I mean, there's just so much. How could anyone have put all this together? Hmm. I suppose it goes to show just how much power Hope's Peak truly wields, or perhaps <laughs> the mastermind may have wanted to provide us with enough entertainment to keep us from getting bored. Um... It's no use. I can't keep up with all this. I, it's it's just too unreal. Hmm. What's wrong? You still can't believe it? What about you? How can you believe it so easily? Things like that aren't us are usually involved. What? Like. What do you mean usually? Usual, normal, ordinary, simple. Those things don't exist anywhere in the world. If you don't understand what they actually represent, you don't understand the nature of anything. You don't pull your punches, do you? <laughs> Besides, what do you consider un uh, what you consider usual is based on your common sense, right? But what makes you think your own common sense applies to me at all? <laughs> the documents gathered here are genuine. I have reviewed them multiple times, so there's no doubt. <laughs> Hold on a sec. You're saying you've read all these documents and more and more than once? But all this has to be like top secret confidential stuff, right? So why? <laughs> My family has a reading room just like this at our home. Our, ours is bigger, of course, and not as dusty. Huh? Hmm. Members of the Takami family have access to any variety of government-related documents. That includes foreign powers as well as domestic. How is that possible? So in other words... I already told you, there's a secret council that controls the world from the shadows. <laughs> My family is a member of that council. And I have within me the bloodline that will allow me to one day bend the world to my will. See, this this sounds a lot like, hey, my dad works at Microsoft, I'll get you banned. <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> Alright, but to become such a ruler, I must know all levels of this world backwards and forwards. So whenever I have time, I like to review whatever documents and materials that interest me. Which is why I can proclaim without a doubt that the materials gathered here are the real thing. This is beyond believing or not believing. Byaki is actually starting to scare me more than actual the actual mastermind. Hmm. And what always interested me the most were the cold case police investigation reports. Reading through those reports has always been a hobby of mine ever since I was little. It's excellent. Mental exercise. I've solved more than a few of those cases just by reviewing the reports. And among all those reports, one of my recent favorites is the Genocide Jack case. 
As he talked, Byakia grabbed a specific file from the shelf. That's right. This is the complete case file. Every single report surrounding the Genocide Jack case has been compiled in here. Hmm. Because there are so many, allow me to quickly summarize the main points. To begin, there are two more notable characteristics in every Genocide Jack murder. The first characteristic is that every, at every crime scene, the word bloodlust is written in the victim's own blood. And the second is that the victims were wait is that when the victims are murdered their bodies are suspended in a certain way bloodlust is written in blood and the victim's body is suspended it's exactly the same as what happened to chihiro but because it's so obvious that makes no fucking sense <laughs> Save your surprise, the best part is yet to come. Hmm. For the second characteristic, where the victims are suspended, the only ones who knew about that particular fact were members of the police and other higher, up other higher ups. By all accounts, nobody in the media ever, ever found out. Huh? Hmm. In other words, no one on the news, no one online, nobody knew about that specific aspect of each crime. Only key officials and the killer himself, sorry, knew about this act of mounting the victim. Hmm. Now, if you recall Chihiro's corpse, hmm. her body was most certainly mounted in this fashion. So, how could the killer have known about suspending the victim? That's right. That's the key question. But in fact, the answer is quite simple. So, in other the words... The culprit isn't a copycat killer. It's the real Genocide Jack. Gah. In other words... That's right. There is the evidence that Genocide Jack has hidden himself among the rest of us. Then, Genocide Jack is real? Such a brutal, fiendish killer really is walking around among us? <laughs> no, that's a different Interesting. Mm -hmm. There are... Things are really starting to get interesting, aren't they? Huh. I never imagined a killer with such a reputation would ever become part of our little game. But, oh sorry, now don't you think it would be good for you to take a look at what we, I've already seen? We might just manage to ferret out a clue or two. Such ignorance. If you get down on your knees and beg, I might even show you myself. Oh, why don't you suck my ass, you piece of shit? There's a ton of thick files stuffed onto the bookshelf. Oh no. <laughs> um, Byakia, about that Genocide Jack case file, could you let me see That's it? Fine. Well, you didn't beg, but I guess it's okay this time. Feel free to look at it in here, but you can't take it with you. Ah, uh, okay, interesting. I don't think it's Genocide Jack, whoever it may be, even though I think it's Toko. I don't think it was her. I think it's a dude that killed her. Oops, I didn't mean to, uh, well, I missed that. Suddenly, my hand stopped. I had reached the page where photos from the scene of the crime, the scene of the cr each crime had all been collected. Uh, it's all scissors. There's scissors everywhere. The names of Genocide Jack's victims ran on for several pages. Ken Harada, Tetsuhiro Honda, so Shoji Gaku, Kano Issei, Taka Takeshi Yoshida 30. I gotta go. Good luck with the game. Uh, thanks, Katoko. Have yourself a great night. Thanks for stopping by. And again, thanks for the follow. Komatsuna Taro, Takafumi Gono, Ich Uchida Naosh Nahosi Naho Naohisa <laughs> Takeshi Masu Masamune uh, Yuto Ya Yumejima. There was no end to it. But one thing became perfectly clear as I read it. All of the killer's countless victims were killed and suspended in exactly the same way. And at the scene of every murder, the word bloodlust was left in the, uh, in the victim's own blood. Hm. But the way they were suspended was with scissors. The other one was with ropes. So I think I'm right. Now take a look at the next page and you'll find another interesting tidbit. Oh, I can say it again. I don't mind. I got... Uh, Oh, I can say it again. I don't mind. I gotta go. Good luck with the game. Oh, thanks, my dude. I very much appreciate that. I hope you have yourself a wonderful night. Uh, the next page... Oh, he's back at looking at it. Super shocked. Profiling results. All of the crimes took place either on weekdays, at night, or during holidays. Either day or night. The most common time for the killings to take place was on holidays in the afternoon. Based on these facts, it could be suggested that the suspect may be a student. 
but the crime took place at 2 a.m. That makes no sense. Afternoons to 2 a.m.? Nah, dude. Evidence suggests that the suspect lingered at the scene, but when they did leave, they were in a panic. Because an eyewitness has never come forward, it's unlikely there was any external reason for this. This confused behavior suggests that the subject may potentially suffer from dissociative identity disorder. Ah, oh, multiple personalities. Interesting. So, in other words... <clears throat> the key point here is that the culprit may well have a split personality. A split personality, like the kind of thing you see on TV, so I'm part of another totally unbelievable story. But this one is way more unbelievable than any other, or anything else up until now. Or maybe it really isn't, I don't know. I feel like my mind has gone numb. Genocide Jack case file has been added to the truth bullet section of your handbook. Let's go. Alright, we should get going soon. Huh? Where are we going? <laughs> Anywhere but here. We've finished our business here, haven't we? Uh, wait, Byakia? As usual, Byakia turned around and left without another word. I hurried out of the library to catch up. Well, this is where we part ways. I have some things I need to take care of before the class trial. Huh? Just all of a sudden like that? I don't have time. Come on, enough you. of your annoying misapprehensions. Did you really think we'd be together the whole time? Take responsibility for yourself and do something useful. Move the investigation forward on your own. Goodbye. Well, goodbye. And just like that, he was gone. Just as quickly as he'd asked me to join him, he'd cut me off. I'm kind of okay with that, though. In the end, I felt like I was just some plaything getting tossed around. Like a salad at a gay bar. <laughs> at the same time, I'd uncovered some really important clues thanks to him. Genocide Jack. He's the one that killed Jihiro. No, he's not. And that murderous fiend is one of us. But who is it? I have to find that out, no matter what it takes. So, Toko is Genocide Jack, but Genocide Jack is a red herring this entire time. And to do that, there's somewhere I have to go. Investigate one more time. I have to go back to the crime scene, the girls' locker room. I should check the boys' locker room, too. Yeah, that's what I thought. And the others might have come up with some info I might find useful while I'm at it. I need to find out everything I can. To the boys' and girls' locker room. Because I think I'm correct. Uh, was that in the pool? Yeah. Oh, hey, Hifumi. Da, 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 da. Ding, ding, ding. Hifumi has discovered evidence revealing the identity of the culprit. I feel mm -hmm. as if... Another stat in Greece for me. Evidence, what did you find? Mm -hmm. I cannot reveal that just yet. Hey, welcome back, Hench Toes. But I guarantee sure that what I found will steal the killer's breath from his lungs. Are you sure about that? Mm. Oh yeah, Miss mm. Ludenberg said she witnessed something mm. worthwhile too. Really? What did she see? Well, she refused to tell seem... me. It's like when a girl bullies the boy she likes, right? R right? <laughs> okay, so where is Celeste now? Mm. The warehouse by the dorms. Mm. She was there, but mm. at the same time, not there. <sighs> Excuse me, what's it gonna be? I'm gonna go look in here. Because I'm already here and I'm not gonna go to a different place. What's that? Why did somebody shit on this carpet? There's a strange stain on the carpet. What is it? Hey, the poster's different too. What the hell? Huh? This poster. It's a popular boy band called Tornado. Somehow it doesn't quite seem to fit in the boys' room. Because it doesn't. We were in here before and there was a big tittied whatever in here. Okay. Huh. Oh, there is a different picture. I knew it. It's the one. Okay, it's the bloodstained poster. The blood is the most noteworthy part, but big breasted swimsuit model is pretty noticeable too. A girl's locker room doesn't seem like the kind of place you'd find something like this, unless it's in the, like a YMCA gay bar. Oh, but wait, that reminds me. The poster in the locker room is... That's right, there's definitely something strange about this. In the boys' locker room, there's a poster of a popular boy band. In the girls' locker room, there's a poster of a big-breasted swimsuit model. Exactly. Could the posters have been switched? No shit, I was here earlier and they were different. But if they were, why? What reason would anyone have? Maybe I should talk to somebody who knows a little bit more about the locker rooms. Okay, what else did I miss? 
So I talked to, I talked to, looked at, looked at. Did I look at Shihiro? I can feel the draining out of my, I can feel the life draining out of my body. It's a dead body. Chihiro's dead body. Okay, I'll take that as a yes. Did I talk to you? Spent a lot of time exercising in the girls locker room, right Sakuras? I've used it nearly every day since it opened up. Sometimes Hina and I use it together. Okay, then let me ask you something. Do you think the posters in the boys' and girls' locker rooms could have been switched? I'm sorry. Sorry, I can't really say. I never really paid any attention to the posters, I see. However... But there is something that's been bothering me about the locker room. You see, I like to drink a little protein coffee every time I finish exercising. We have protein coffee? Mm. In the warehouse, it's not the highest quality, but I don't have a lot of other options. I mix protein powder with coffee and down a glass of it after exercising. Anyway, the other day I spilled some on the carpet in the girls' locker room and it left a stain. Mm-hmm. A stain? But I don't see any stain on the carpet now. Of course. Exactly. I noticed it earlier. The stain had disappeared. I can only assume someone came along and cleaned it up, but still it... Isn't it unusually clean, as if there was never a stain here to begin with? Okay. Okay. So the poster may not have given me anything, but that sure did. Yeah. Dude had a real comp. Okay. Yeah. So this is all repeat. Yeah. Either he was beating off, or I'm just not nearly good at finishing this, as I thought I was. What? There's still more to check, is there? I thought I did. Do I talk to you? Hey Kyoko, have you made any progress Indeed. on the investigation? Generally speaking. However. But I have to get going. I have something unrelated to take care of. Something besides the investigation? What is it? Well. Nothing you need to worry about. Just concentrate on the murder. So then. But uh, before I go, let me give you one piece of advice. You should examine Chihiro's body one more time. Thoroughly. Okay, Chihiro has a dick. Also, her handbook is missing. You might want to determine its whereabouts. So is Chihiro's handbook the one that's broken? Goodbye. That's it. I'll be praying for your success. With that, Kyoko turned and left the girls' locker room. I guess I'll take another look at the body then. And Chihiro's handbook is missing. That's definitely worth... That's definitely worth worrying about. Chihiro's e-handbook has been added to the truth bullet section of your handbook. Okay. Kyoko said I should examine the body one more time. I know she said thoroughly, but I do have my limits. Well, I'd better give it a shot anyway. Let's see. Chihiro's hands are bound with what looks like some kind of rope. Already different from what we saw in the file involving um, Genocide Jack. The rope was used to prop her up in a kind of crucifix position. Huh? This rope has a plug. The extension cord! Okay. Wait, so then this isn't a rope at all. But the more I think about it, the more that's not the only thing that concerns me. Chihiro's fatal injury was the blow to the head. Which means someone struck her in the head with, in order to kill her. That's right, there's the issue of her being suspended and the fatal blow. At first, I didn't see any reason to think too much about either of them. But seeing them again after looking through the Genocide Jack file, something's not quite right. What does this all mean? Status of the dead body has been added to the truth bullet section. Well, the one thing most likely to tie all these mysteries to mysteries mysteries together is the true nature of the rope that was used to suspend Shahiro. And to figure out that and to figure that out, there's a certain place I need to revisit and look over again. Plus, it might help to look at the Genocide Jag case file one more time. I mean, I don't really need to look at that one more time, but I'll do it anyway if the game needs. Oh shit, the extension cord is gone. Was it Byakia? There's a thick layer of dust on the top of the desk. Maybe there's some kind of clue here. Guess not. Thank you, game. You're exactly what I was looking for. Nope, that's not at all what I picked, but okay. I guess it's the lamp I'm 
Yeah, yeah, okay. Huh? The lamp won't turn on. Oh, I see. It's not plugged in. The lamp's cord isn't long enough to reach the outlet from here. But last time I saw it, it was definitely on, and it was definitely right here. <laughs> yep. Biaki was using an extension cord. But there's no extension cord here now. I wonder if... Library disc lamp has been added. It, it can't be Biakia. He's too obvious. There's still more I need to ch Oh, right. God damn it. It's gonna make me check the case. I think it was here? I want to take another look at the genocide J Jack. Jake? I was gonna say Jake. I know it was around here somewhere. Huh? It's gone. Did someone take it out of the archive? But the only one who would do something like that, I can't think of anyone but Yakia. Okay, so... Maybe it was Byakia? I don't think it was, though. Oh, Hina, how is Toko doing? Mm. Same as before, she won't come out and she just keeps on mumbling something about Genocide Jack. <laughs> so I just left her. You left her? My head was all swimming. I was getting pretty hungry. Yeah. Oh, but don't worry. I'm going to head back as soon as I'm done eating. Toko's not exactly pleasant, but I'm still worried about her. Speaking of which, what are you huh? eating? A donut, of course. Oh, I can give her the donut floaty. Of course. <sighs> There's two things I'm sure God created. Outer space and donuts. Really? Hmm. I bet Shahiro would have liked to eat more donuts. Maybe that was her one big regret. Aww. Ah, I should have tried to spend more time with her. Come to think of it, who did she spend time well. with? Yeah, she was a little bit strange. Didn't really hang out with the other girls much. It was like, it was like she was trying to keep her distance from us. Actually, Sakura said something similar. She said that even though you and her invited Chihiro to exercise with you, she always refused. Yeah, totally. Yep, it's true. And it wasn't just us either. It was like she said, like she stayed away from all the other girls. Was she just shy? Mm. I don't know. She talked to all. She talked to all. Talked to the boys all the time. Isn't it kind of weird to be shy around your own sex, but totally fine with the opposite sex? Mm. Ah. Oh wait, maybe. Maybe she was used to guys spoiling her. The law says you can't judge a book by its cover, right? You think so? I never really saw her as that kind of girl. Aoi's account was added to the truth bullet section. Damn, wasn't expecting to find a fucking hint there. Yeah, okay, here we go. Celeste, what are you doing here? <laughs> this warehouse is amazing. It has absolutely ev- mm, Sorry. This warehouse is amazing. It has absolutely everything one might need to live a full life. From food to towels, there's an endless supply to choose from. I see that, but have you found anything related to the case? Most unfortunate. I knew you were going to ask me that. I thought talking about the warehouse itself might misdirect you, but I see it was pointless. Then you did find something. <laughs> Very well, I will tell you and only you. Actually. Last night I saw her here. Shihiro was in the warehouse. What, really? Indeed. This was right before nighttime. Hmm? Hmm? What are you doing out this late? Oh, um, I was just... Are you planning to go exercise, perhaps? What? How did you know? Because I can see a blue track jacket sticking out of that duffel bag you're carrying. Oh, you're right. Thanks. Well, I'd better get going. I'm kind of in a hurry. <sighs> she stuffed the jacket into her bag in a hurry. It was almost like she was trying to hide it. And just like that, she was good. Yes, indeed. I assumed she was merely stocking up to go exercise in the morning, but it would appear she ignored the nighttime rule and headed directly to the girls' locker room. She hadn't broken a rule. None of this would have ever happened. <laughs> you get what you deserve, I suppose. So apparently, she went to the girls' locker locker room late at night in order to exercise without anyone knowing? 
But the strange thing is, there was no trace of the ja track jacket or duffel bag Celeste said she saw Chihiro carrying. Which would mean the killer would have gotten rid of it somehow. Celeste's account has been added to it. Ding dong. Oh, I got all the info. Either that or I'm wrong. <laughs> but based on how long that took me, I'm going to guarantee you that that is just um, all the info. So, uh, I'm getting tired of waiting. Shall we just plunge right in? Like a fucking plunger in a toilet bowl. Let's do it, baby. It's the moment you've all been waiting for. The class trial. You remember where to meet, right? Please go through the red door on the first floor of the school. <laughs> See you soon. <clears throat> begin the class. Tr begin the class trial, or it's about to begin. Why'd you give me the ore? The red door is right through here. Thank you, game. I didn't know that from the first time that I did this. Oh, God. And so, is everyone ready to work? Hmm? Am I blind or are we missing someone? Yo. Yeah, Toko's not here. Huh? And Toko is... You really don't remember? Come on! Can I just... I'm just kidding. How could I forget that little in that job? She's a crucial part of the class trial this time. What are you gonna okay, do? Okay, okay, I'll go ahead and drag her out here, kick her and score her back. Go just one moment, please. And just like that, he said, and a few minutes later, he reappeared, dragging Toko behind him. See, it's just too yeah. obvious that it's her. Yeah, I'll take it all. I, I t told him I didn't want to, but he forced me. I can't believe you would drag a girl around. Yeah. Terrible. You're t terrible. Phew. Well, so now everyone's here, right? Okay then. Hustle on to the elevator and let's give this show on. Let's get the show on the road. <laughs> I'll see you guys down there. Let's go. So, shall we get going? It's time to find out who killed Chihiro. Chihiro Fujisaki. She was so gentle, so calm and meek. Nobody had any problems with her. Someone made the choice to kill a girl like that. And the murder and that murderer is one of us. Someone standing right here. We have no choice, right? We have to do this. It's true. Yes. I gave a small nod in reply. With one last deep breath, I walked toward the elevator on shaky legs. With each step forward, I can feel my heart starting to race faster and faster. And as, as soon as everyone was on, the elevator began to descend. I couldn't get a handle on my emotions, couldn't stop speculating. The steel box sank with heavy clunking sounds deeper and deeper into the ground. And as we went deeper and deeper, the uneasiness in my heart grew bigger and bigger. The elevator was unaffected, however, it continued to descend without hesitation. Until finally, it came to a sudden stop. 